Yo, what up? It's your boy Owen J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Black Grady. Welcome to another episode of Grady Nights. It's been a while since you and I have been together, yeah. and I've got you too many names. Name. I've got too many names, as my daughter always tells me. i got too many things going on. What's up, Jason? What's going on, guys? Yeah, we took a little bit of time off. That was a, I had some family stuff I was taking care of. Nothing bad, but, you know, Everything's now we're good. back after a... Uh, a minute? After, wild card weekend? Break. Yeah, I mean, we were still in there. So yeah. we're, today we're going to talk about wild card weekend, and we're going to talk about the Burr's upcoming event. So it was a great weekend of football. Uh, it was okay. a great, it was a great nah, weekend it was a, of it was football. Some bad football. That was it, not a great uh, weekend. Who, who, was, who was bad? Who was bad? Who was bad? The Ravens were bad. I I mean, the game was tight. Yeah, but they were bad. But were they bad? I mean, it's 17 <laughs> 17. Yeah, but it wasn't good football. Just like uh, the Dolphins were. Hey. Any, the five hour Dolphins Bills game was look, the slowest thing ever to watch. Look, again, that was a, that was, that's good football. That's knock down, drag out, close score football. <laughs> Do, would you rather that or would you rather the Dallas game last well, night? That was the worst game of the whole exactly. weekend. Exactly. Exactly. Everything else, at least there's intrigue and it keeps me watching because yeah. I need to know what's going to happen. That, that's what I consider good football. I mean, there was one really good game. Yeah, that's well, for sure. It, two, like, two good games. All these games are good <laughs> when you compare it to this. All these games this weekend versus. The Super Bowl with the Rams the first time when it was nine to three. Oh, that game was terrible. Okay, so but that again, was close. You just said it was close. Said yeah, close. I said close, <laughs> but been scoring. That's my point. Yeah, so they're yeah. scoring all weekend. Don't argue with me when I'm arguing with you and I'm telling you how you're telling me. You. So uh let's start with the first game of the weekend. Uh San Francisco and the Seahawks, you know, divisional game, divisional, whatever, all that stuff. We're gonna keep talking about that because it happened a lot this weekend. It really did. It it was, you know, just division powerhouse wildcard weekend. And at halftime, who was up? Seattle was up unexpectedly. Oh, my God. Seattle was winning. And they should have won. Oh, they should have won that game. Now, not really. G- Gino, they, they shouldn't really have won. But G- Geno was Smith was, you know, a surprise all year. When, again, when you get a quarterback someplace where they have some kind of structure and they don't ask you to do everything, they just ask you to do what you need to do and you put weapons around them, Geno Smith, you know, uh, they they wrote me, but I didn't write back. You know what I mean? Line, yeah. line at a, the fucking month for one. like, yeah, it was a great one. You know, they put they do, but I didn't write back. Uh, so he made it our way to the playoffs, and at the halftime, oh man, I know Purdy did not look good. It's because Purdy's not good. Purdy's not good, and when you <laughs> rattle his cage, he looked yeah. pretty bad. I hate all the Purdy jokes, yeah, but that, his name just works. Perfectly it just perfect, works. Man. You can't not do it his but, stat line looks so good but if you watch that game he just wasn't good. he was not comfortable he right. was not confident at the end of course he starts banging his chest like king kong because you know do you know how to fumble which again the line caves on you it happens the only thing i can say about that is when you're climbing the pocket you gotta be smart not even not even gotta be smart i've never seen anyone climb the pocket with the ball at their hip right get that ball up high. i've never seen that you're like right. he's He's not like you're about to run. You're just chilling in the pocket, climbing the pocket, and the, your arm is at your head. If he was going to throw, it would have taken forever ever to get the ball up, yeah. to get the ball out. So when it gets smacked down, I'm like, what were you doing? It, the play uh, before that was the killer, though. Yeah. The illegal man downfield on the opposite side of the field on the touchdown. Yeah. Uh, uh, and overall, these refs this weekend have been atrocious. Uh, all year. All, just all year. Yeah. yeah. It's It's been really bad. Just missed calls. I mean, I'm not to jump ahead because we're going to talk about it, but the Cowboys had three PATs on, on Tampa Bay and they just weren't called. I'm mean, like, even Troy was like, yeah, that was not right. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So their officiating was bad, but I appreciate the semi whooping that the Seahawks put down on the 49ers. Cause it gives me confidence projecting forward and having to possibly play them um, in a championship game. It does, but they're, the Niners do have a scary roster, though. They, they, they the one good thing is you saw you can throw on the Niners. Yeah, yeah, and and they have a scary roster. But guess what? You're in the playoffs. Everybody seems scary. Yeah. Like I said, the Seahawks <laughs> seem scary for half a football for game. <laughs> they look scary. Yeah, and then I mean, all of a sudden oh. they just weren't. And then they weren't. So you Momentum know, momentum went away, and that game yep. just got away from them quick. And that's what happens when you're not at home. Yes, it does. When they had that fumble, because the crowd was quiet. Yeah, the the whole first half, the crowd was not in it, and that affects the 49ers. Because the Seahawks got to go up there to the line, do what they wanted to do. Mm. When that fumble happened, he can't get plays in quick enough. He's having to go to a silent count. Yeah, it All that happens to help with the momentum of things and how things change. So moving on to the Jags and the Chargers. 
I called this game. I told everybody, my boy Trevor Lawrence never <laughs> lost in his life. Not on, on Saturday. A, or Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, imagine being that good at anything. I mean, um, I'm, I'm imagine good. being that good at anything. Were you? I've never lost a game on a Friday or Saturday my whole life, and I've been playing football my whole life, and I played at the highest level in college, and now – to be an NFL professional and be able to keep <laughs> saying it, man alive. It didn't I mean, look like it, though, in the first half, huh? Ooh! <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I mean, I had a parlay on it. And I wish uh, I wish that I just put my little $5 down. I was going to put $5 down at halftime because they were plus 4000 That would have been such a good bet. And I just didn't want to do it. And, and the only reason I didn't do it is because I thought about it when the Vikings happened. And I didn't do it. And they came back and won. I was like, oh, I lost all the money. I'm like, watch me go even just waste $5 right now. And they're not going to come back. Did you see that other awful bet in the reverse? The guy at halftime pay, uh, put down $1.4 million. To win $11,000. To win $11,000. And the Jacksonville Jaguars came all the way back. Now, um, the Chargers uh, organization is cheap and a trash panda organization. Yep. So they're not going to fire their coach. Which is insane. They fired the OC today, though. Yeah, they fired the OC. But again, you don't have any sense to run the ball and run the clock down. Yeah, that and guy's and the worst. It, it's insane. Like if I'm a head <laughs> if I'm head coach, I still gotta be fired. Cause I'm talking to my OC like, yo, run this clock, swing passes, stay in bounds. Let's get and this they have clock a good moving. Back. And have a good running back. Like people are like, oh, the defense let them back in the game. I don't care what you say. When the defense gives you five turnovers and gives you the ball. Three out of the five turnovers inside the 25 for you to score. The defense doesn't have to do anything the rest of the game. You know what else you don't do in the second half? You don't snap the ball with 20 seconds left on the play clock. You got to work the clock better. Again, that is That's coaching. Coaching. Absolutely. And that coach had Mike Williams out of the game, which would have helped your offense in the second half. Well, he had to play him you, in the week before. Yeah, and get his back broken, literally fractured his back. So, and Bosa is a piece of trash, yo. Yeah. Bosa is a piece of trash. I don't even like the Bosa brothers, but fuck the Bosa brothers. <laughs> I don't like neither one of them bitches. I don't, I don't know the other one from San Francisco that much, but the, uh, the dude in like the Chargers, him. like, dude, first of all, you're slamming your helmet down. You should have been ejected because Twice. you had two <laughs> personal fouls against you. Did you see who gave him the helmet back to slam it the second time? Who? The head coach. Oh, well. Picked up the helmet and handed it back to him. Well, I mean, Brandon Staley is the worst. The worst. <laughs> and again, two, you're, he's complaining about the refs afterwards. You should have been ejected from the game. And you cost your team. You really did. Like at the end of it, you're the one that let them down the field to go get the field goal and because well, you can't control yourself. He changed that extra point attempt where they move it up to the one yard line after the penalty. So now the Doug's going to break out one of his good plays to go for two. Man, Trevor Lawrence is like, he just went up and over. And you got to be tall to go up and over yeah, the pile. You got to be tall. And, and he did it. And I, I love Trevor Lawrence, but I hate Trevor Lawrence's hair. I hate the headband. Like, it's just so... Don't talk about the Waffle House King like that. It's it's so <laughs> annoying, like, with the headband, and I just don't like it. But, again, Dougie P. <laughs> now, I've been talking, there's been a lot of conversation about, is Doug Peterson a better coach than Nick Sirianni? And I say yes. So and people far? And people are like, blah, 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 blah. and I get loving your coach. I love my team. Yeah. I love the coach. But and so he so gets me. Win a playoff game. He's got to win me a playoff game first. Right, yeah. <laughs> then he then he's got to get me to a, 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 a NFC conference game. And I mean, and if he if he even gets me to a Super Bowl, I'll say the least comparable. I'm not going right. to say he's got to win me a Super Bowl yeah, and then win easy. others. Yeah. Like, but there's a different level right. to it. And like Doug beat Belichick in the Super Bowl. And, yes. Like, let's go. Like, yes. It's a, it's a and conversation Doug, ender. And Doug took a team that from worst to first. Yep. In one and won a game in the playoffs. So I got to give it to Doug right now until, you know what I mean? And something comes up. But I do think that should Doug still be the coach here? Question that's been going around this week is silly, though. D well, it doesn't matter because they, they lost control of Doug because Doug wanted his own anonymity. Exactly. And so that he couldn't be the coach here anymore. Exactly. And I, I, I think if he was the coach here, I feel this team would be very similar. Definitely. I I, th I feel like the team, the roster, if they would have put the roster around, they would have had a defensive coordinator worth of salt playing soft coverages. The team would have been pretty much the same. So Talk I, about I, the Texans next head coach. Yeah, hey, <laughs> get him out of here. And as soon as he gets out of here, I'm going to be stuck with somebody worse. So I don't yeah, even know so why I'm complaining about that. So it doesn't matter. But we can't get Jim Schwartz back. No, we can't. got hired today. Oh, did he? By, By who? the Browns. By the Browns? I Cleveland. Be Cleveland. <laughs> Believe land. Cleveland, this is for you. Okay. <laughs> Buffalo and Miami. Buffalo. That Buffalo team is a team people tell me they're going to win the Super Bowl because they're so inspired. 
That team? They need to get some offensive rhythm. That team? Yeah. So, I love Kate. You know, your lady loves the Bills. She, she's 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 a uh, Bills mafia. You mean she might put me to a table? But <laughs> every time I watch this dude, he just I just throws fe- it deep, man. It's all hero ball. I, I feel like he he's incapable of winning a championship because Dayball is now the coach That's of the Giants. That's the number one reason why. You because can tell the difference da- that guy makes. Oh, it's huge. When Dayball was his coach, the turnovers weren't like that. Right. The risk wasn't like that. When when they get up. And again, they should be bleeding the clock down. He feels like, nah, wing. I could throw a six. Wing. <laughs> and he's just running and trying to truck people for no reason. Mm-hmm. It's cute when you're 25 and 26. When you're 30, your wheels are going to be flat, bro. You're going to bust a tire real quick. Like, No, we don't talk about Josh Allen running. That's not the running quarterbacks we complain about. You I know, know that. Because he's Caucasian, that's we're impressed with white men that can run. <laughs> like I, I know, I know that like <laughs> people forget there are white wide receivers. I mean, there's no white running backs anymore, and there's not that many white DBs. Like I know that all the speed has <laughs> gone to the dark side of the universe, but white guys can still run. But it's just so impressive the way that ju- I mean, my <laughs> gosh, listening to Tony Romo jerk off <laughs> to, to Allen. And it was my favorite thing in the world because he was so, when you, you got a guy like Allen and you do a thing like Allen and you Allen and you do it. And the next thing you know, the, the uh, Dolphins are tied it up. He's like, oh, well, well, the, the Dolphins are fighting really hard. It's, you know, backing up their guy because, you know, a, yeah, this nobody has got tied up with the Buffalo Bills. That's embarrassing. How come nobody could catch the ball in that game? The weather? It was sunny. Was the, I, I don't I don't even know was was was, was it was it was, it was forty warm-ish. degrees. Yeah, it, was it was like forty five degrees. Waddle was killing the Dolphins. The <laughs> Bills had five or six drops. And if and if Waddle didn't get dinged up, it, it might have went a different way. But again, you let this nobody come in here and circle the wagons around you. Now again, right. they pulled away at the end of the game. But that was just embarrassing. Again, division another divisional game, right. and those things do happen like that. But Stetson Stallone, whoever his name is, the quarterback, Skyler, <laughs> Skyler, <laughs> the Skywalker, whatever his name, he is. Ir- Miss, talk about Mr. Relevant. He is irrelevant to me. I don't care what his name is. I was just like, you're letting this dude do this to you, and you think you're gonna beat Patrick Mahomes, boy? Right. That's what I'm saying. You you think you could be like Burrow? This you think you could be Burrow? I don't know if they're gonna be Burrow. Uh, Only thing. No, well, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that when we get to that game. Right. You know what's crazy about Buffalo when you look at them? What about them? They have Diggs. Yep. They got Allen. They got Knox. Knox is okay. Knox is he's okay, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's good. But and then like Davis has he can go deep. Yeah, and that's it. Now they have to rely on Beasley in the slot. Yeah, they Ooh. were they were they were they were Beasleying it up. I'm like, didn't uh, this dude just go to the practice squad? I stand that guy. So yeah, I don't even just like white receiver. See, white receiver. <laughs> you are so still hate Beasley. You are so racist. <laughs> I hate Beasley. It is embarrassing, <laughs> and I I don't even know if we could keep doing this show. <laughs> I'm getting hate mail and stuff. So let's move on because I don't like Beasley to <laughs> uh, New York Giants and Minnesota Vikings. I was at the grocery store before the game came on. I snuck out real quick. And uh, this kid at the grocery store, shout out to you, dude. I, I know he watches the show, and I can't remember his name. It's driving me crazy. He was like, the Giants are going to smoke the Vikings. And I'm like, they might. But, I mean, it's not prime time. He's like, well, it is prime time for Cousins. He's like, if it's not 1 o'clock, Cousins can't play. And I'm like, well, it's usually 8 o'clock there's a problem with. But then he reminded me. They pushed the game back to he, a little bit, that game he, went back. He, he, reminded me <laughs> that, he reminded me that the game got pushed back. And... Every playoff game is a national primetime game. So and I counts. said, it well, counts. it counts. <laughs> and then sure enough, what did they do? They came out here and I don't know. Christmas is over. Thanksgiving is long gone. Mm-hmm. Why are you giving Daniel Jones $50 million a year? That's going to happen. You just gave Daniel Jones $50 million no, because, oh, he's going to get it. Oh, I know. He, they, they have nowhere else to go. They, they Anyway, he's going to get that $50 million. I, I know he is. But I'm like. You made him look like Joe Montana. He's the best quarterback ever. I mean, people are on his him jock. Him and Purdy are the two best Pe- quarterbacks left. People are on his <laughs> jock. He, uh, and again, uh, to be to be a top 10 quarterback in the league, you've got to be white or you've got to be <laughs> Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick at their super peak powers. Mm-hmm. Because if you're just a tan average person, you cannot be a top five, top 10, top 42, whatever. What's the name? Tried to say Hertz was 42. Oh, other Sims? Qu- yeah, Sims. Yeah. So, I mean, like, but people right now are talking about, who'd you say said that about Danny? Oh, Bill Simmons on his uh, sport on the ringer podcast. 
So that he might be the best quarterback left in the NFC. How? My God. Like, come on. Oh, no. First off, the Vikings defense against the pass is atrocious. One of the worst passing defenses in the league. When the Eagles beat the Vikings, by the way, and lit them up, all we heard was, well, the Vikings aren't that good. It's not that good of a win. No one cares. Now the Giants do it, and all of a sudden it's the biggest win in the history of the NFL. And the same thing when the Cowboys did it. Right. Like, when the Cowboys did it, it's like, oh, my God. But when the Eagles did it, it's like, oh. But I'm like, okay, so we all have said, and, man, this has got to be embarrassing for him. The whole year, no one's given the Vikings any kind of credit or respect. None. <laughs> because even when they're there 11 and, like, 6 or whatever, they went on these runs, but they lose to certain people where he's like, see, told you, same old Vikings. They had a point differential. That's why. It's it's just so it's never happened before, and and they've come back from down thirty three to nothing. Yeah. Like you can't keep doing that. And the Giants played the game that they wanted to play, the same game that they played a month ago. They kept it close, yep. and it was there because the, like you said, the Vikings can't stop the pass. And Danny Dimes is one of the fastest white men on earth. Call him the Flash, why don't you? I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, it's so out of control. Again, they played a great game. They won the game. It's great for them. Eli Man is coming to the game. He's gonna get a double bird double up. Burst. You know what I mean? Ma- Ma- Molly from first takes coming, you know, like um so so many people are coming to this game because the Giants have finally made it back into the playoffs. Yeah. So come on down to the link and get booed and and and, and screamed at by three year olds. I love it. I Take appreciate it. Ill. Yeah, yeah. Come <laughs> come on down. So then we go back to the Bengals game that you said was not interesting. Oh, that, that was so boring. That, that game I was close and tight with nothing happening. AFC North football games just sometimes can just get so bogged down. They're all like that. I know. They're all like that. Except for when Ben Roethlisberger was in his prime and he was just slinging it all over the place to AB. Like, those games were just out of control because they would just blow people out. But other than that, you're right. It is a knuckle, drag down the defense fight. It's fun to watch, but sometimes you're just like, ugh. And <laughs> the defense, I'm like, where, where, do the, where do the Bengals? Now, the Bengals issue were injuries. Yes. They, their offensive line gets dinged up, and Burrow went back to being young Burrow because there's only so much he can take uh, standing in the time. face of danger. You know what I mean? And he's at the point now where he's at a detriment to himself. I love Joe Burrow's white boy swag. I mean, he got the turtleneck <laughs> on. He wears the chains. They put the shades on him. I'm like, he's like a black avatar puppet out there, but he be him with his swag. Like, you know what I mean? My window's always <laughs> open. I love how smooth he is and all that, right? But you know what his problem is? His ego has gotten to him yeah, because he refuses to want to run the ball. Right. I'm I'm watching that game. After like four or five plays, I checked down how many times he audibled out of what I assume were runs. Yeah. He would just audible. And right. I'm like, okay. He's like, I like my arm better. Yes. And so you don't run the ball, which makes, again, that game drag on longer, keeping it closer, which is what they want. Because if he doesn't get to score... Then he just goes back and does it again. He's like, I'm just, I mean, I know you got Chase, but I'm like, dude, you got Higgins, but the line's not holding up for you. They're missing three of the five starters. Yeah. Run the, crazy. Run the ball, play action, then get the ball down the field. But he just thinks that he can do it. And again, I believe in his ability. He's one of the top, he, he's one of the top three quarterbacks. Like when people say, oh, who would you take over Jalen Hurts? There's only three oh, yeah. people I'm taking over Jalen Hurts. Uh, Three, who, who, maybe four. Who, who, who are you take, take? Who are you taking over Jalen Hurts? Take Mahomes for sure. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna take Allen, even though we talked about he's got his issues to work out. But I, I'd probably take Allen. But that, if it's yeah. arguable, yep, it's okay. Uh, Herbert, skill wise, although he still doesn't win enough. I am. I am. See, that's my thing. That's my crux. What people say. It. I am never taking Herbert over Jalen Hurts with that. ever in my life. That's why he is not before. a winner. He is not a gamer. His arm looks good. He's a regular season Dak Prescott, and I don't Ooh. like him. I don't respect him. I don't I'll appreciate him. him. <laughs> this dude looks so good during the regular season. He's got the great arm, arms, but he makes bonehead decisions, That's not even the Josh Allen decisions. And I, you understand what Josh is doing right. when he throws the picks. Herbert just – Turns into this meek little weak punk mm-hmm. sissy. And have you ever heard him speak no. at the podium? He looks like a little kid, though. Looks like a kid, sounds like a kid, <laughs> speaks like a kid, thinks like a kid. Right. I don't want him. I don't like him. I'm disrespectful yeah. when it comes to Herbert. That's why I said a maybe. Uh, I know. He's, that one is <laughs> yeah. A, like, yeah, yeah, he's the one that's out. Yeah. So, <laughs> Burrow, Mahomes, uh, and, uh, Allen. and Allen. Yep. And Allen is my swappable for Hertz. Like, I'll put Hertz and then Allen right now just because Hertz has made this jump yeah. and he doesn't turn the ball over. Right. But, yeah, that, that game was close. But I feel like Cincinnati, they got they had more injuries in that game. They're not going to be able to hang on against the Bills unless. On the road. 
on the road. That's unless, more important too. Unless they get those turnovers, unless Josh right. Allen does what Josh Allen does, he can't keep doing this because the level of quarterback play is is not going to allow him to do it. Right. So he's, he's got to have. Now. And he, and the problem with him is I don't know if you can make a Super Bowl run unless you get the buy, because if you give him four games to play, one of those four games he's throwing multiple interceptions. Ooh. That's tough. One of those games, he's throwing multiple. Like when I say yeah. multiple, I mean three plus. Mm-hmm. He, he he could just do it. Um, so then we guess get to this last game. Last night's game. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I lost my parlay. I was perfect on the board. I had all the games picked. I even had my touchdown scores right. I had people with yards. I had, I had I had a thirteen leg parlay with twelve legs on it. Green across the boards. Well done. And uh, I should have took the cash out. Should have took the cash out. But I had believed that Dak Prescott was going to Dak Prescott. And but well, we didn't know Tom Brady retired before the game. Tom Brady. That was the worst performance I've ever seen from a quarterback in the playoffs. What is, what is it? What is the stupid saying everybody says? If you're scared, get a dog. Yeah, he was scared. My God, he needs a whole. <laughs> he needs a pound puppy bloodhound. He gang. won't step into anything. He was. He was embarrassingly afraid. Like. For the fact that people are tweeting all over the place, this play calling is atrocious, all these screens. I'm like, because if you don't throw the ball in point one second, he's gonna throw it, he's to gonna throw it into the ground. Yep. So yeah, you gotta throw screens. Like, what else are you gonna call? This guy's afraid. He threw that interception, and I'm like, who is this man? Why didn't he just throw that ball out of the end zone? Can he not yeah. throw it 15 yards anymore? Yeah, he can because he threw that fade for the <laughs> touchdown. Like, I know. And that was the thing, too. He's had 27 touchdowns, 10 interceptions this year. He is a good to above good quarterback still yes. and he's a quarterback that can win you a Super Bowl but only if the team and the surroundings are perfect he needs if there perfect is any line. flaw yeah. he cannot compete he cannot uh contain and Dak went out there against a vanilla banged up defense you know the last like five or six weeks they've had so many injuries he went out there and carved them up they had no pressure he had no worries. He got to do whatever he wanted to. Threw for four touchdowns, ran for one. Oh, Dak, Dackity, Dak, Dak, Dak. I love it. Go ahead and climb that mountain. I, I, you know how good that this uh, win was for Cowboys fans? I haven't had one Cowboy fan say anything to me. They've been talking shit to me all year. I didn't get one DM, one message, right. because they know right. that that <laughs> performance was so fugazi. Yeah. I haven't had one person message me. Because they know it's not right. And they know, you, you go ahead and tip that scale because you're going against the 49ers next week. Now, again, I don't think Purdy's perfect, and I think that the pressure might get to him too. But my thing is, go in there and rumble, young man, rumble, and fuck each other up. Yeah, for sure. Go Number one, I, I, this sounds terrible to say because it, it doesn't bode well for my own predictions of life. Mm-hmm. If the Cowboys beat, 49ers, they're going to lose the next week guaranteed because everybody who plays the 49ers loses lose. the next week. If the 49ers make it, they're going to either have false bravado because Dak is prone to throwing three interceptions. And and if they, went on the road in a playoff game. Exactly. He already yeah. was in shambles that first half against Seahawks, as we said. And again, he's the kind of guy who gets motivated off of I threw a ball seven yards to Debo, and he ran 67 yards for a touchdown. (laughs) And then stands there and goes, ah! I'm like, bro, you threw a six-yard out route. That's right, though. Uh, Fantasy-wise, that was perfect. Oh, (laughs) fantasy's over, bro. We can use playoffs now. So so. do you think Todd Bowles was trying to book a plane ticket to Thailand to hang out with Kingsbury in the third quarter? Was he waiting until the fourth quarter, like when he assumed he was going to get fired? Like when do you think he was? It was was, was just blank staring the whole time. I told you. Todd, we have an important game right now. It started. I told you what the internet said. The internet said it was Leftwich's fault. Well, he got fired. Yeah, he got fired. Yeah, I know. But um, Todd Bowles is a defensive coach. You only (laughs) can defend if you have the horses. Yeah. You can only defend if you have the horses. They didn't have the horses. They so, had them last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, not for nothing. They smacked us up last year in the playoffs. I know Todd Bowles' highlight now is talking trash on Hertz in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. And 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 then his other highlight is letting Cooper Cup burn him for 60 yards. <laughs> yeah. And and that highlight of talking trash, you know, didn't hold well with uh, Brady because Brady loves Hertz. Yeah. Because they're, they're workout buddies now and he believes in his work ethic, which is, again, just to bring this up, I know. We talked about this. We haven't talked about this on the show ever. But Tom Brady does not shake hands with people he doesn't deem worthy, mm-hmm. which I think is just disrespectful because it's not good sportsmanship. It's, good it's not. It's not. <laughs> it, it you know you know what it is? 
it's embarrassing because again, it's if a sore I, loser mentality, and not only a sore loser thing, if I'm the greatest, I'm going to shake your hand and tell you I'm still better than you, and you are nothing to me. Like again, hearing the hear, like hearing Fitzpatrick say why he loves beating Tom Brady because Tom Brady didn't shake his hand and he's beaten him every time since right. then, which is meaningless <laughs> games in the regular season, but he's. It motivated him to go out and beat Tom Brady. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just had I don't that think chance. Jordan was shaking hands with everybody, though. Uh, J- Jordan was as much as like he was all a jerk. Those, <laughs> as much as like Jordan was a jerk. I I watched those games. They were uh, unless it was the uh, Pistons, they were all hugging it up, dapping it up at oh, the end of games. I hear that now. Guys are friendly. Yeah. I know. That's a, that's it, a new it, thing. It, it drives me crazy because you know Magic and Bird and Barkley weren't right. freaking playing cards together right. in hotel rooms before playoff games of playing against each other the night before. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. again, anyway. I, I hate my, I, <laughs> shake somebody's Go hand, Tom Brady. Away. Shake somebody's hand, Tom Do Brady. It. So. Let's Tom Brady will come up short on a handshake now. If you step towards him, he's oh, gonna get scared. He's oh, gonna man. flinch he's, away. He is gonna flinch away. It's so <laughs> embarrassing, Jason. It is so so bad. Embarrassing. I mean, in the beginning of that game, like Dak was like oh for his first four, and it looked like he was rattled a little bit. And I'm like, Dak, Dak doing Dak, and then Dak did Dak stuff. Good way. Good Dak showed up, and it, it, they were just trying to like dink and just to get somebody to catch a ball. Mm-hmm. And again, they. Roll my parlay, roll my life, cry Parlay. myself to sleep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, par- parlays for poor people. I consider myself poor. I could have been rich. <laughs> I could have been a king. Uh, maybe I'll bounce back this weekend. Let's just talk real quick. So, the Bengals and the Bills, who you got? I'm going to take the Bills because it's in Buffalo. Okay. Um, Who else is there? You got Chiefs, Dow- Jags. Chiefs and Jags. Uh, this is Chiefs. It's easy. Oh, Doug's coming for Andy. D- <laughs> Two, I wish that could have been our Super Bowl. <laughs> that would have just been extra storyline on top of uh, storyline, but I don't want to hear that story. So, obviously, yeah. the Chiefs are going to destroy them. They should. They're going to destroy them. <laughs> yeah. They had they had a week off. They had time off. Andy, Andy Reid on a bye week is unbeatable. True. Like, I, I don't – it doesn't even – like, it's unfathomable <laughs> that he would lose on a bye week. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then the, the um, Cowboys, Cowboys and the 49ers. Who you got? Niners. I got the by I, ten. I got the I got the Niners too. <laughs> I just ugh, I wanted to be a knockdown drag out game. Yeah. I want I want I want blood and guts all over the field. And then the Eagles and the Giants. Now a, a lot of people are overly confident here in Philadelphia. There's a lot of bloviating going on. There's a lot of bloviating from the Giants' standpoint. They were in the stadium at, at the Vikings Say, games. Oh, yeah, they were calling Eagles uh, out. Oh, we want the Eagles. F them Eagles. Okay. F them Eagles. Like, you stay around to get on national TV. <laughs> you think that Danny Dimes is going to be throwing dimes. And the last game, I don't even care about it. It doesn't even matter. Nope. I don't the know. first game that we played, blowout. Blowout. Yeah. Now, that also might not matter because Saquon was held in check. But Saquon can also... Change Debo game. you. He can get a run and explode for a 60-yard run. But the Eagles are fully healthy. There's nobody on the injury report. Oh, well, not oh, nobody. Maddox, right? Maddox is on the injury report, and uh, Lane is still on the injury report. But Hurts is off the injury report now. Wolverine, he's healed. He's healed. So no excuses about the shoulder now. No excuse about the shoulder. single thing about the shoulder. So full offense. Um, In this game, I'm fully confident in a bye week get right game. And if anything else happens, I will burn this city down. <laughs> so this uh, game means everything for Hertz and Sirianni. Oh, like the, oh. the weight of this game is on their shoulders big time. Unfortunately, it, the same thing I said about uh, unbelievable, unfathomable mm-hmm. about Reed. It's impossible that they lose this game because if they do, yep, their yep. fortunes are completely done. changed. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'd be calling the radio all the time today, yeah. and I, I brought it specifically. I'm like. Everybody gives Harry Roseman all this praise. Mm-hmm. If the Eagles lose, Harry mm-hmm. Roseman's praise goes out the window. Absolutely. And everybody's like, he built this team together. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. he built this team together. But I see the 49ers with their third string quarterback yep. on a nine game win streak. Right. And if they win and we don't, who's the better GM? Right. Who constructed a better team? Let's be honest. Their because their coach, this year, the Eagles draft picks this year, have done nothing. Nothing. There's not a single contribution. Jordan Davis hasn't contributed at all. 
and it, and it, and again, it's one of those things where when you're playing Madden, it looks so good on paper, but it hasn't been realized but on the field. I'm not giving up on those rookies or anything. No, no, they no. just haven't contributed this year. Well, Davis got hurt, and our um, they got those veterans, right? Yeah. Got Linval Joseph and Dominican Sue, but then Davis became a non-factor. So, um, and just just to because I don't know how long we've been going, I don't, I don't want to go too long. I'm good. But uh, let's uh, talk about one more thing real quick that I almost forgot. Real quick before we get to that, the Eagles game is going to be closer than people think, but the Eagles are going to win. Closer than people think. Like, what do you think of score wise? I think it's within a touchdown a game. Oh, I think it's by ten. I hope so, but I, I just I, think it's I, division. I, 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 it's that. division, but it's it's the link in a playoff game. True, man. Danny Jones, yeah, that's bah, true. Bah, bah, Good bah. Bah. Like it's, <laughs> once them fireworks start popping and them bud lights start rolling, boy, it's Eight gonna 15 be on a Saturday too. Ooh, that place is gonna be oh, sauced up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> if you so, if, <laughs> if you if you want to take your kids to the zoo to see a bunch of animals, <laughs> go to that one. Get up at four thirty in the morning and just drive around the parking <laughs> lot of the lake, boy. You will see gazelles, lions, hippos, <laughs> rhinos, everything imaginable. You get a couple free hot dogs, you know what I mean? Some cotton candy will be out there for the kids. You want to go to the zoo? Go to the parking lot and watch the tailgating for the Philadelphia Eagles, yeah. starting at five thirty a.m. when those gates open. It is a zoo. <laughs> be prepared. And they got all day to be drinking. Oh, man. 12 hours plus of sauciness. I'm t- <laughs> man, look, I, g- good luck, New York. Good luck. Don't waste your money on these tickets, bro. Watch it on TV. Stay safe. Stay bro. safe. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm going to yeah. say. I will put it out there. Now, back to what I was about to say. How I, you know, on this show, uh, we I, I cuss usually more than you do, and this is yeah, a semi family friendly show. But how did the kicker make it on that plane alive to go back to Dallas? Oh, that was insane! How is this <laughs> kicker being how get taken? Right. How, you, <laughs> if you're listening on audio, there is like a twitch in my eye that like won't like I got like a tick in my eye. How is this man once to have a job? Two, you're taking him to play the San Francisco Forty Niners <laughs> on the road. You, I mean, now, they were in Tampa on the roads. So I'm gonna, but but yeah, but no, that man's confidence is gone. You it, can't rely on him in a key kick. He he is uh, now again. You know, it only takes one good kick to probably get back. From I've the never yips. seen a kicker miss like that. Though. I've never seen a kicker miss like that either. And I, <laughs> the the thing cracking me up is like people are like I don't know why Dak freaking out. Dak throws four interceptions. Don't nobody say nothing to him. I'm like, because that's yeah, a kicker. Yeah, but I'm saying that, <laughs> like, and and also the four interceptions aren't all pick sixes. You know right. what I mean? Like if he threw four or five pick sixes. Yeah, I mean the kicker can be like, damn, Dak. Like, what are we doing, baby? If Tampa was a but, real football team. Those kicks would have came back to haunt Dallas, but Tampa was not. They were not. <laughs> but this man missed four extra points you think he was trying to high five people after the game like great job guys great job yo hey. <laughs> somebody said he's yeah somebody <laughs> said he had a parlay on the kicks like i'm like i don't you can't you can't have money on missing that many kicks and think it's gonna work for you right because like, it's you too obvious it's too obvious like you see so you're, you're pulling for the under you're, yeah. it's only one point at a time bro you're not putting up 12 touchdowns it was so like bad. it was so bad like and it, my favorite thing too was like people were just zooming on that ball laces out laces out Get it on. Okay, the, the first kick, the, maybe uh, there was on a hash where the side of the hash, they moved it to the other hash. Maybe it was on a patch of dirt. The the the, the kicker, right. the handler, ball handler, mo- patted down the dirt. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what else do you want people to do? You ever watch the movie The Replacements? Yes. Right, when their kicker, he's got the mob guys on his back and they're telling him he's got to miss the kicks. Yeah. That's kind of what it felt like. That's like, what yo, it, all his family members say. That, I need to know. That's what it felt like. like and, <laughs> and the look on his face was just of... It, it it looked like it looked like a person on death row. It looked like a man that was walking down a hallway knowing he was about to be and in an electric chair. Mike McCarthy, that dunce of a coach, is like, keep on kicking, keep on going. <laughs> and Dak's like, why aren't we going go for, for two? two? <laughs> why aren't we going for two? Right. Oh man. I hate if I'm that kicker, I'm going after the second one. I'm like, I think my hamstring, I don't know. It just feels something happened. I don't See, know. I just gotta The Cowboys are so corny. Yeah. They don't have any essence of their own. Did you see they have the Dallas Star chain? Yeah. That they wear. Yeah. And McCarthy's wearing it and doing Did his you white see man his dance. Ugly hoodie too? He was ugh, I hate them. Hoodie so was much. Gross. Get your get your own swag. <laughs> At least we got our bat capes and stuff. We we came up with something funny. And, the underdog and we masks. rode with underdog masks. Like <laughs> no we did it. Like you're out here wearing the chain. Like that's college stuff. Yeah. Okay. 
The, 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 the turnover chain. You ain't getting no turnovers. Why are you wearing a chain? Who passed around the chain? <laughs> Kirk Duggins. Yeah. D- Diggs over here. Stephen A. Smith, watch your mouth. Stephen A. Smith did go off, obviously, because he always does that for theater. But he went a little extra crazy. But, again, they still got to go play the 49ers this week. The Eagles get to play the New York Giants. Uh, Saturday, 8-15. Saturday, 8-15. That place is going to be a rocking. I wish Don't I could come a knocking. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to actually go down and win uh, club seats on Thursday. I'm going to see yeah, if I can. Oh, congrats on the right. win. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if anybody wants some media passes to yeah. hand to us, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, well, I'm, I'm, right. I'm about to make us some media passes to see if they work. <laughs> just just print them up, get the laminate, get the lemonade, you know what I mean, and get, get it going. Um, follow uh, Jason on Twitter at IQMZ Sports. Um, uh, he also helps me with black gritty stuff that is everywhere else, like on Facebook. Join our Facebook. We got a lot of fun stuff, posting news, things like that, not yeah. just Eagle stuff. And uh, I'm blackgritty.com. It's just trying to be more stuff. consistent with the podcast. That's there. Oh, yeah, we'll be back we'll in our the best flow of things for you. I mean, sometimes you know, <laughs> here's the thing about that sometimes you miss it, sometimes you don't, right. and uh, we don't think we're more special than everybody else. No. You don't need us all the time, yeah, but when we're here. We're having fun. We're having a good time. Not a long time. Hopefully the listeners are too. Yeah. And uh, we're out. Bye.